This video is not to show you, hey, look at me and what I can do. This video is to encourage you out there who are playing sketches of songs, little parts of songs, because you can't play the whole song because you are not at the level that you need to be to play to that song. So over the last few weeks in my online sessions, I've talked again and again and again about playing to the level that you're at if you can't play to the level that you're listening to or learning from. Every single song can be broken down to its basic chords and you can play a version of that. It's a very chronic problem in the community where many people can only play little parts of songs because they can't play the other parts. The other parts are way above their ability, so they just don't play them. They only play the parts they can, so they never really learn a full song. They only know parts of them. And I was playing a song in the key of A, and I happened to play this riff. And I said, boy, that sure sounds familiar. And I was playing it over and over and over again because I couldn't quite figure out where I had heard it before. And then it finally dawned on me after some time that it is that opening riff and the repetitive riff that is used in Mississippi blues which is that very well-known William Brown song. I have never worked out Mississippi Blues. It's a song I've listened to a thousand times, and I've seen everybody under the sun do a version of it. However, I've never played it. So when I hit on that riff, just by knowing the melody, can I come up with an arrangement that will work in this song? And I knew it was an A, based on that riff I just played. And so I knew that I needed my A chord. I knew that I needed a D chord. And I knew that I needed an E chord. Well, why? Because it's our one, four, five. And we're playing blues. It's always one, four, five. So I started playing around from this riff. And I knew that I wanted to get to an E7. So I started going. And all I'm doing is walking from this E to this E7. And now I had a little bit of that opening. And now I knew that there was that single lead line run, but I didn't know where it was and I didn't know how to play it, but I knew that it went something like... And so I just said, hey, I'll just play a minor pen pentatonic scale thing out of this A minor. Why not just borrow from there? And then I needed a walk down. So I figured, well, until I find a better one, why not just borrow from Robert Johnson? And then I had the whole opening phrase. This is not closely associated with the original recording, except that I am sticking to the right melody line. And that is my point here, is that I am playing the melody line. I am playing the correct chord changes, so it does sound like the song. I'm coming up with a basic version here that I can now use as a blueprint to really go in any direction I want to now. I can decide to play it like the original recording. I can go that route. I can try to learn it note for note. 
Or I can, based on my own skill level, go, okay, now how do I do the rest of the song? So I know I needed my A, my D, and my E. And now I went about figuring out the, the melody. And because I've seen so many people do this before, I had a little bit of a head start and I knew that they were going. And any, every kind of combination that I began to play out of this A chord, this, uh, in, it, which is an E chord shape, but again in the key of A, I didn't like the way it felt. It was really clunky to me. I didn't like it at all. And then I said, well, it's the same as this. And I said, man, I really like that because this, that in general is a very satisfying riff for me in A, I use it a lot, I really enjoy it. So I liked this A7, sixth, open. And I really liked that for my A section. And then I said, well, the D, the melody line, out of this D, seven chord shape and I and I played around with that until I wanted to until I came up with a D9 which worked way better than the D7 and I could go back to A I can go back up and I've got this This is just a placeholder so I can play the song and get familiar with it. It's my rough draft that I can play with. This video is not to show you, hey, look at me and what I can do. This video is to encourage you out there who are playing sketches of songs, little parts of songs, because you can't play the whole song because you are not at the level that you need to be to play to that song. Those who have done that and have gone that route, just play the little bits that you can. You have been playing those little bits for years and years and years, and then you scratch your head and wonder, why am I not a better guitar player? You will never become a better guitar player if you're only playing bits and pieces of songs. My suggestion to you is to do exactly what I did, is simplify it. That will at least give you something to play all the way through. You're gonna be a better guitar player by default because you're playing the whole song through. You're getting better. Those of you who can do that, I know there's a lot of you out there and I teach a lot of players who are like, I can learn anything someone shows me. They don't struggle with the left hand, they don't struggle with the right hand. They struggle with the creative energy to be able to do what they wanna do. So if you, they'll learn Stefan Grossman's arrangement of Mississippi Blues or they'll learn a Tommy Emanuel song, or they'll learn the Robert Johnson stuff. And they have no problem as long as somebody shows them what to do. But when it comes time for them to improvise or do something on their own, they're stuck. And that is the other avenue of trying. You have to try to push beyond that boundary. And the only way to do it is by making yourself play those chords in a different position. If you know where all your different A chords are, 
I've got one choice, two choice, three choice, four choice. I skipped this G one because I don't like holding this G chord. So I've got four options and every single one of those chords, there's a scale in that chord, there's a riff in that chord, there's typical things that happen out of that chord. So if I combine different chords together, different places, I have an infinite amount of combinations that I can come up with. Again, based on my own creativity, based on my own know-how. So if you are playing songs, wherever that chord is, in whatever spot it is, the next time through, you have to play it in a different place. If I'm playing down here, The next time through, I don't get to play down here. I have to force myself somewhere else. So I might go here. I'm gonna force myself to be uncomfortable. I'm gonna force myself to go somewhere I haven't gone before and I have to find the melody. And once I find the melody, I have to figure out, okay, now how am I gonna execute it? Like realistically, how am I gonna play it out of that position? And it's gonna be extremely uncomfortable because it's not gonna be what you're used to. That doesn't mean that you now have to play it that way and you can't play it the, the other way that you know it. All we're simply trying to do here is force ourselves out of our comfort zones to try something new because once you learn how to do that and learn how to move up and down the neck and not be afraid to stray from what you've learned, all of a sudden creativity starts to begin to move and it starts to flow and you're like, hey, I know how to move from A to A. So now when I'm playing songs with an A in it, I can move freely up and down the neck. Or hey, I know how to move up and down the neck in E. So now I can freely do it and I can make different choices. So you gotta try to push beyond where you are. That is where I'm gonna end things. I hope this has been helpful. Again, play to the level that you are at and have fun. Take care.